Hello and welcome to another fantastic development diary. Uh, I'm going to be doing a lot of window flipping today, so instead of recording Firefox, I'm going to be recording my entire view. So, uh, to answer your question right off the bat, yes, my taskbar is locked to the left. No, that's not unusual. No, it doesn't make me a homosexual. I, uh, I just like it on the left. I, I got I got used to it with Ubuntu, and now I, I use it on Windows, and I find that it takes up much less space, and I usually have like 8 million fucking taskbar things open anyway, so works better. All right, I promised that I would talk about unit testing, um, and I found a great a great way to talk about unit testing, and that would be with the CAPTCHA. This thing right here, the thing that everyone hates, Everyone hates CAPTCHAs, and for good reason. They are literally data mining. The reason why you see bicycles and fire hydrants and all sorts of shit that you would see as like a road hazard is because that's literally road hazards, and those cars that are taking pictures 24-7 are trained by an army of CAPTCHAs, the humans answering these questions uh, submit their data, and that's how the, the AI is trained nowadays. Um, Google's CAPTCHA recaptcha is literally the worst fucking thing ever. And if you use a proxy, like uh, a VPN, you will answer a million fucking questions. And it's it's the worst shit because it's like, okay, there's a fucking sidewalk and like less than like a tenth of the sidewalk is in the top images. And then it's like, do I click the top images that only have teensy tiny bits of sidewalk or do I take the, the squares that only have like entirely sidewalk? And it's just, it's such a fucking agonizing thing. And now there's a new capture called the H capture and the H capture is the same fucking thing. It's a uh, clicking fucking images of, of bicycles and fire hydrants all the fucking time. But this one's better because it pays the people who publish their captures. So, uh, you can expect these companies uh, or sites that use HCAPTCHA to put CAPTCHAs on everything, even stuff that doesn't really need a CAPTCHA because they get paid fucking money for the privilege. Um, to get around this, I had Frederick, uh, way, way back when, develop a Laravel CAPTCHA. It used to be called the Brennan CAPTCHA, but I renamed it to Laravel CAPTCHA. Uh, and the source code for this looks like... Uh, this it's kind of clunky. I've been I've been redoing the entire package for the captcha because I don't want it in the database anymore. I want it in Redis, and this is the code for generating the captcha. It's a huge block of code. It could be better done, but the result is is pretty, uh, pretty solid. The whole point with a captcha like this is you want something that's unique that OCR can't easily read, and that the cost of breaking and the time consumed to break the captcha exceeds the value of breaking the captcha so for right now just having something like this uh from what frederick told me uh the ocr has issues with lines and stuff like that so there's lines and circles that show up to uh distort it's like that the, the curvature and stuff i'm gonna probably increase it over time i'm probably gonna add like scan lines to it so that little tiny blue lines go all the way through it and polka dots and stuff around it for some reason he knew a lot about this and uh, code i think he broke codes and stuff earlier earlier in his life anyways a captcha like this is far preferred by most people to something that like the the google captcha which is obnoxious as shit and uh people people it's it's easier so uh let me show you the unit test let me show you what a unit test looks like i'm gonna go up i'm gonna use i, I run this as www data i probably don't need to but i just do php and then i do php you know i go through and this pops up there's a bunch of dots and then you get okay and that seeing that okay is the best feeling in the entire world because what a unit test is it's a series of challenges. So I'll take take a look at this. This is a typical unit test file. Uh, in this instance, we're testing what I've recently added uh, to the code base as event firings. And I'll explain that in a second. But you tell, and this is a Laravel specific thing. This isn't standard with unit tests, I don't think. You tell the, the event facade that you're expecting to fake, meaning you're not actually doing work here. You're just capturing information for the purposes of unit testing. Yeah, I'm making a challenge here, a new capture challenge, and in the capture challenge, uh, the construct is built up. 
Um, you can either restore it from a hash by supplying the hash property or parameter, and then it either restores from the session, uh, restores from hash, or it creates a new one. Or restores from session, meaning you supply a hash and it tries to fetch the one from that hash, or you try to supply your session ID and get a session uh, a hash from that session. And if all else fails, then it creates a new one. And this is done that way for two purposes. Um, if you are someone on tour who has cookies disabled, uh, and you can still s supply a captcha <coughs> without JavaScript enabled by taking the hash value as a as a form token and passing that through with the solution. And instead of restoring the captcha by session, you restore it by just checking the hash. And since it's SHA-256, you know, it, it would be very hard for people to break that kind of stuff. Anyways, uh, once it's generated, uh, you get, for instance, in this, you get these values here. You get a hash string, and you get expires that. So that's five minutes. This ca uh, captcha is good for five minutes. And you test QX and K, I think. And ta da. And the captcha disappears. Well, why does the captcha disappear? Because with my latest work, these events that are firing in this test, CAPTCHA was created and CAPTCHA, CAPTCHA was answered, are caught up here in the event service provider. Uh, for the CAPTCHA was answered uh, handler, the CAPTCHA grace set listener fires. And for the post was created event, the CAPTCHA grace reduce was, was fired. So in CAPTCHA grace set, a token is put for the value... Um, of our CAPTCHA lifespan post site setting for the minute value of a CAPTCHA lifespan time. I think by default it's five posts and an hour. So um, these are these are customizable. If you set lifespan post to zero, for instance, then um, the CAPTCHA is good for the entire duration of that period. Uh, in, so if you have zero lifespan, but an hour, you can post as much as you want in that hour. Or you can do something like a 24 hour CAPTCHA, but you have 10 posts in that hour. So that way you have a, as a site administrator, you have a great deal of flexibility deciding how many CAPTCHAs people are gonna have to, to break in order to post. Um, and for right now, this is across all the boards. You can't just set it granularly, granularly on the board yet. And the, the event test here is to make sure that those events fire. So when I create the, the CAPTCHA challenge, the CAPTCHA was created event should fire. And when you try to do an answer, in this instance I'm taking a CAPTCHA challenge and I'm making a new CAPTCHA answer, directly supplying the hash and the solution so that I know it's going to be correct all the time, and then CAPTCHA was answered. And then another test here, expecting what happens when things are done incorrectly. So CAPTCHA not, or test not answered event, creates the challenge, and then it supplies a bogus answer. And I'm making sure that the CAPTCHA was answered class it is not fired. And when the unit test is ran, all three of these tests are, are, are uh, executed. And the parameter, if anything goes wrong, like for instance, if I change this up a bit, and I go here, and I want to say, assert that the CAPTCHA was not answered, and then I go back to the unit test, and I run the unit test, I run through, and then, uh-oh, it says that the unexpected CAPTCHA was answered event was dispatched. So it's letting me know right away that there is an issue with the code, um, or at least with the test. And this is something that I want to integrate more into the actual application, because the application is really, really big, and it has many moving parts, and there's a lot firing asynchronously, and all sorts of stuff is going on that it would be impossible for me to keep track of as a one-man, you know, one-man team, basically, um, to see if everything was working. And after you change something, if everything continues to work, that is that is the biggest thing that I find. A lot of people, you know, there's some people who um, literally write their entire application as test and then try to write because they they set up the APIs and stuff, and then they go through and they write the actual logic. And then eventually hope that those unit tests, and they do like a back and forth. And I don't, I don't like to do that. I like to just build the logic and then go through and cement it with uh, uh, unit tests. And while doing the cementing, I usually find the flaws in how I've done things or if I've overcomplicated things. The reason why I spent so much time rebuilding the entire capture system 
is because I realized while trying to set up unit tests that uh, I was putting too much logic in too, too few classes. In particular, uh, there was just the model. And I discovered while abstracting stuff from the model that I really didn't need the model at all. And it would probably be faster and better just to have it in the Redis store, uh, which is what I've ended up doing. And because it's a package, like uh, it's just instead of being a part of the actual Infinity Next uh, software, it's it's its own thing that you can actually include in other projects. Probably not a, not a good idea because I'm not really a good maintainer and I could commit breaking shit all the time. But uh, in this instance, I'm good to commit it. I want to say I events and unit testing for events. I'll push it. And um, I've actually got it set up right now so that the test site uses the package source directly instead of using like an include from Composer. But uh, I think it's set up so that there's two graces. So I go to Redis CLI, I can pull this up. Uh, capture grace. That's not right. Is the grace already over? Aha, okay, it is. EO and J. Oops. Hmm. I find it annoying to work with. Oh, I spelled Laravel wrong. That would do it, wouldn't it? So there's the, uh, the, there's the session. Then I can just do. Copy this. Get. And that's one. And every time that event uh, Laravel or Capture Grace Reduce fires when a post is created, we decrement this value by one. And if it's less than one after decrementing it, we completely forget it. So if I do another test, so the capture pops up because the key that was previously one was removed after it was re reduced to zero. And with, when um, the message is sent, uh, if you require a CAPTCHA, it says so. It applies information that says you have to get a CAPTCHA. And then that fires replace. And that's how you get the new CAPTCHA. That's how the JSON works. So the system talks back and forth and it operates based on this. And uh, the, the, the decision to how many posts you get and how long the grace lasts is the application level. It's not a part of the package, which is why I had to add events so that the package and the um, application could communicate better and you could create application specific implementations of the CAPTCHA. Uh, so that's unit testing. Uh, that's my work on the CAPTCHA. I'm probably not done. I need to make sure that it works with, um, with other things. Uh, registration and board creation both have CAPTCHAs that are distinct from the posts and I need to make sure that those work. Because technically I should be launching on the 20th tomorrow. I'm not sure if I will be. Uh, captures working is a huge concern of mine. Uh, for Because I want people to be able to register boards 100%. Make sure that everyone can register their boards. And um, change their board assets and posts. But as long as those things work, it should be fine. I need to make sure. I need to take a look at the storage and make sure that I'm happy with the storage. Because... If it's a live site and I'm concerned about the retention of the data and the storage stuff, I want to make sure I'm not uh, having to change the storage anymore because that would be nightmarish. And there's one bug in particular I want to make sure that I remember to look at because I think when it, it creates a thumbnail, uh, thumbnail, D dupe. Here I am, a boomer with fucking uh, flashcards. A stack of flashcards and a pen. And I'm writing shit down because the only way to keep my scatterbrained ass organized at all. Okay. Well, thanks for watching this. Um, I'll probably probably be adding more unit tests. I have to make to these these things. I want to check, make sure that people can register and stuff. Make sure that the events are firing. That all that good stuff works. And yeah. Oh yeah. And bands. <laughs> There's an issue where. It expects you to be ban off. That expects you to be logged in to check your bands, which is obviously bullshit. You don't have to be logged in to check your bands. So I have to fix that. All right. Um, 
hopefully I can get this sorted out. Uh, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I'm annoyed about the domain thing too, because GoDaddy is so fucking bad. I bought the domain, and then without asking me where I wanted it transferred to, they transferred it to GoDaddy. And then GoDaddy has this policy where there's a 60 day minimum waiting period before they can transfer it again. And they say this is to pre prevent fraud. This is to prevent domain hijacking. Like assholes, I bought the fucking domain from you. You know it's my fucking money. You know that I bought it. And you had a, it's been mine for a week already. Give me my fucking domain name with this bullshit log. And of course, I sent that email on Friday, so I'm not going to hear back from them until Tuesday, probably because of 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 uh, Easter Easter Monday. It's like I'm, I'm so tired of of fraud. And here's my here's the the big things that piss me off now: children and fraud. Every bullshit law that's ever passed has something to do with preventing, with uh, protecting kids, and every bullshit decision that a company makes is in the name of preventing fraud. And it's like, if your fucking credit card details get stolen and you lose all your fucking money, then I guess go fuck yourself. This is why Bitcoin is so important, because if you get your Bitcoin stolen, there's nobody to fucking help you. There's no intermediary watching Bitcoin transactions, preventing fraud, besides the... Uh, the miners doing proof of state uh, proof of work to make sure the transaction was valid to begin with and f fuck kids if your parents can't if your parents can't protect their fucking kids no one can so stop pretending i'm so i'm so done with this shit <laughs>